Hi, this is Kirti. I founded and run Sahas, an initiative that works to support survivors of gender-based violence mm -hmm. and foster cultures of active bystanding. Joining me today is Meghna of Trustin. Hi, Meghna. Thank you so much for joining me today. Yes, thank you so much for having me, Kirti. It's always great to talk to you. Likewise, Meghna. So let's start right from the top. And I don't want to speak for anyone, so I'd love for you to introduce yourself to our listeners and readers and viewers. So could you talk a little bit about yourself and Trustin and how it all came about? Sure. So I'm the founder of Trustin. And what we are doing is building tech solutions that really help companies build compliant and compassionate cultures. So we're starting out with implementation of POSH. So as you might know, POSH is the prevention of sexual harassment legislation. But eventually we want to look at all labor, civil and service laws, right? So we are looking at redress of all workplace misconduct. So our mission is very simple. We're just thinking of workplace safety at scale because we believe that everybody deserves to feel safe and empowered to pursue their goals. And that sense of safety must really start at the companies and college campuses where we spend most of our time and therefore our lives. So that's what we believe. And for me, the idea for Trustin was born from a very personal pain, right? So I saw a lot of misconduct at a workplace, tried to speak up, had no idea of my options, right? And was eventually forced out. And I think that left a lasting impact on me because I really believe that somebody with all my privilege, all my access, um, I was not aware of any of the legal recourses, right? Like the Posh law is such a fantastic, sensitive and employee centric law at the core. Um, and it came out in late 2013, but as late as 2018, like I was not aware of it. And most people around me were not aware of it. And we were all facing a lot of these kinds of issues at the workplace. So that's when I started, you know, thinking a lot more about programs and products. I started doing some research. Luckily, I'm quite stubborn. Um, that's when I found Project Callisto in the US. There was Speak Fully, then there was All Voices. I saw Vault and Spot in the UK. So I saw a lot of systems that enabled survivors to report sexual harassment at the workplace, right? And they were doing great work. And then the question really became that, why can't we have something like this for India? So when I made some very ugly Figma mock-ups, I started talking to a lot of leaders in the HR and legal spaces. You know, they were like, well, nobody is going to pay for this. Right. And that's when the Me Too movement also happened to hit India. Right. And um, of course, you might be aware that India and China were the only countries where the Me Too movement happened either anonymously or through intermediaries, because there's just so much fear, stigma and retribution. Right. In our cultures, in our countries. Um, and then also, like I had a lot of friends who were on internal committees of companies who wanted to desperately do the right thing, but had no idea what the right thing to do was because the posh law was like a black box to them. Right. So they're vested with the powers of a civil court, but many of them are non-lawyers like me. And at that point, I had read the Posh Law. I was able to give them a little bit of advice about it. But I think that's when the second half of the trust and platform started coming in that, hey, companies also need help to redress workplace sexual harassment complaints. And unless we're closing that loop of justice, more people are not going to come forward to report. And therefore, workplaces are going to remain unsafe. So yeah, I think that was quite long, but that is where the inspiration for trust has come from, from lived experience of myself and a lot of other people. And we hope to solve this problem at scale in a very sensitive manner, not just in India, but in a lot of emerging countries like Asia and Africa, where this is not seen as a problem. This is seen as a good to have problem, right? Uh, but we don't believe that's true. Thank you so much, Meghna, for first of all, sharing your own personal story. I can imagine it can't have been easy to be in the place where you didn't know where to go or what to do. And then for using that pain to really create a tool that can support so many people ahead of us. So speaking of the tool, Meghna, can you tell us a little bit about what it entails and what Trustin's products are like? Sure. So our core product, the one, you know, I was just talking a little bit about is called Trustin Enterprise. So it's very simple. So let's say, Keithy, that you're an employee of company X, right? And God forbid, like you're going through a difficult time. You're like, I don't know if I'm being harassed or not. Is this acceptable? And where do I go? So you would log into company X's portal, right? Trust an app. And then you would be able to read the posh policy or the safety policy. You would see who's on the internal committee and how to contact them if you want to do so directly. You could also talk to posh pal, who's our NLP enabled chatbot and read some real life case studies or ask questions around what's going to happen. Right. What is some of the relief you're entitled to? Um, what are some examples and non-examples of sexual harassment or a workplace? So what Poshpal really does is simplify it into non-legal language and give you real life examples. 
right? So once you feel like you have enough information to make that decision, um, you can go on the platform itself and report your case and upload all your digital evidences. Um, so we have a very trauma informed flow. You can use either free text or a guided form. And whenever you're ready, you can escalate it to the head of the internal committee, right? So the minute now that happens, all of the deliverables, documentation deadlines are automated on um, the trust and platform. So the internal committee, the internal committee head, the members, the head of HR, they all get different types of alerts, right? And the system guides them through exactly what to do and when. It helps them generate case reports and annual reports. And they also have access to a different version of PoshPal that can solve their problems as internal committees, right? So they're very aware of things like what is the balance of probabilities? What are some other decision-making principles that they need to keep in mind as a civil court when they're looking at what happened and what should happen next? We also have a second product called Trust and Partner. So this is really for Porsche experts, legal firms, HR firms that are offering Porsche services to manage and scale their services, right? So what we tell them is that this is a platform where you can manage all your external members and experts. Um, you can manage all your trainers, you can manage your companies across cities and geographies. And we hope this will help you get your services to all the companies who need them. Um, what we also say is that we would love for them to co-sell Trust and Enterprise to the portfolio companies that they have, usually the larger ones who might see a more pressing need for trust and enterprise. And we offer them a finder's fee or a revenue sharing model, depending on what they prefer. So we are hopeful that with this, companies will be able to access both the you know, platform as well as the services that they need to ensure that they have a fully um, safe culture. That's an amazing spectrum of things, Nigna. I keep thinking of how you said it's necessary to close the loop to make justice accessible. And oftentimes we focus so heavily on the survivor side that we forget that the system should also evolve to be able to provide and respond to the survivor. Oh yeah, that brings me to that uh, another point, Kitya. I actually forgot. So while the case is going on, right, as you know, transparency is a huge problem. Nobody can bring lawyers into systems like this, right? So both the complainant and respondent have real-time update dashboards. They also have support dashboards where they can do everything from asking for, you know, intern relief, like a different manager working from home, uh, asking IC members to remove themselves due to bias. So all of these things are also there to empower both parties as well as the internal committee throughout the process. That's a fabulous, fabulous endeavor. Hats off to you and your team, Negna. So moving from there to the actual workplace, what are some of the barriers you found that survivors encounter when they try to report an incident? I think um, in many ways, right, the dominant, I don't want to say assumption, maybe the mindset we have, right, is that Awareness is enough, right? And there is a lot of great work being done. Obviously, awareness is the first step, right? Uh, without being aware of our rights, we can't access our rights. Um, but the next step, I would say, in this process is for us to evolve ways to access our rights that are not only people dependent or that do not have a single workflow. Because if there's even a single crack or a stop in that workflow, then people can't access their rights, right? Which is very often what happens. So there could be um, the fear, the stigma, the shame that stops people from coming forward. And many times that is reinforced by those closest to them, maybe their colleagues or their family, right? Like, why would you risk your job? Um, why would you come forward? There's obviously a lot of socioeconomic factors that come into play. Um, the second big bucket is really this fear of retaliation or reputational damage, right? Which means that if you're somebody who's very invested in your career trajectory, you might not come forward because you fear what will happen. Um, many times what happens is also for daring to complain, the harassment continues unabated through other sources, right? So this is a huge barrier. Uh, the third is really a lack of I would say trust in the system. I think that's why the name is trust in, right? Um, there's just a sense of futility that means you're like, even if I complain, so what? Nothing is going to change and my life is going to get harder. So really there's no incentive for you to come forward. And there are a lot of negative incentives for anybody who comes forward, right? Negative consequences. So I think these are the three big barriers that really prevent people from accessing their rights, even if they're aware of them. Thank you for spelling that out, Meghna. So moving from there to a solution-centered focus, um, how can a workplace foster a culture of allies and active bystanding, knowing all of these barriers to be perhaps a common thing across most workplaces? 
Right. I mean, of course, Kiti, you would be, you know, much better uh, suited to really talk about this. But I think one is it's really important to have and uphold a strong sort of code of conduct, right? Like what is acceptable and unacceptable in this space? Um, what kind of behaviors get rewarded or penalized? I think everybody can have a very strong and robust policy, but upholding it really, I've seen there's a ripple effect really across um, the different levels. Most often it starts at the top. And, um, you know, that's, that's something that people intrinsically fall into when they join a new company, right? And I think um, the second thing is really thinking about the systems. So having an internal committee that's trained and accountable and empathetic, right? Um, having other, I mean, it's not just about sexual harassment, right? There's so many other kinds of workplace misconduct. So having those ethics committees, um, having grievance redressal committees, whatever you want to call them, but really also equipping them with the tools to be effective civil courts, not just having them on paper, right? And not just overwhelming them also by not giving them the right um, tools to do the work. I think that's very, very important. I have seen a lot of companies um, do really well in these two aspects, right? Like having like strong policies, upholding them, and also having like um, the committees to resolve them. I think also just, um, I think the third step can really be like closing the loop on this. So maybe you're having cases, right? Maybe you're redressing them really well and you're providing resolution for parties. I think even that needs to be called out and in some ways celebrated. Like I recently spoke to an HR leader who was telling me that they saw a 5X increase in posh case reporting and redress at their company. And usually people might see that as a very negative thing, but this leader was very happy. And she said, this shows that people have more faith in us and that the awareness programs that we're running are actually working, right? And I think that's such a healthy attitude and we should all see it like that. I think um, when we think about company culture, as in so many other things, there's always that cycle of rupture and repair right? A uh, healthy workplace is one where people are having grievances, right? And they're actually preparing them in ways to move forward. Um, and obviously you're removing those negative elements. You're trying to remove those huge power imbalances that make abuse and harassment possible, right? So I think no workplace is without that. And a healthy workplace is definitely one where these things don't get swept under the carpet, but they're actually brought out into the open, resolved, aired out, and then celebrated as a sign of a healthy culture. Then I think people, I mean, this is Obviously, it's very utopian. Um, I think around the world, we are really, you know, we're at a tipping point where we're grappling with these power imbalances and how to move past them. But I do think the first step comes from like admitting that mistakes happen everywhere. Grievances will come up despite the best of intentions. And all we can do is move forward better by learning from them. Well put. That was so well put. And I absolutely really love the fact that you alluded to the true health of a workplace in line in the fact that we create channels for people to speak up without feeling the need to withhold and to really find ways and channels within that space to speak up feeling safe at the same time. Right, Meghna. So down to my last question. If somebody wants to commit to building that healthy workspace, um, how do they engage with Trustin? And perhaps if you could also speak to maybe any offerings that Trustin has for the unorganized sector and how they can also engage with the product. Absolutely. I mean, um, I think, of course, it's going to sound like a plug, but if anybody is looking to set up posh processes or augment their existing processes, because, you know, in, at the core, we are a product company. So we uh, only strengthen existing service offerings, right? And training offerings and things that you already have in place. So they can go into trustin.co.in and they can sign up for a demo. So we'd love to walk them through the enterprise product um, and see how we can support their needs. Also understanding their needs, right? Is it a product and their annual Porsche compliance? Is it that they're looking for something else entirely? Maybe they're looking to set it up from the ground up. I think all those are things that we can help them with. So first we really do like a needs analysis and deep dive into the context. And then we suggest what could, uh, you know, really support them with our product as well as anything else that they need. Um, I think the second thing, and you know, your question about the unorganized sector is a great one. So for our clients who have blue collar workers, right? who might not always have access to the technology that Trustin runs on. We do have helplines. Um, we're building things that are more you know, vernacular and IVR is enabled. So those are things we make available as well. But because we have found that on average, 
per month. We have thousands of inquiries on Poshpal, right? We decide to make it more open to the general public. So as you know, with in partnership with UN Sahas, we're rolling out um, the WhatsApp version of Poshpal called Trustbot. So obviously Trustbot will offer resources related to Posh. It will simplify all of the legalese around it and demystify it for all employees. But we, since the lines between work and home have now blurred, a lot of internal companies are actually getting inquiries about domestic safety now, right? And unfortunately, as we know, domestic violence is spiking around the globe. So now we are offering resources, not just related to the Posh law and workplace safety, but also domestic safety and the domestic violence law through SAHAS, right? So what we are really hopeful is that this will empower people to really understand, okay, what are the white spaces um, in the support that we're accessing as individuals? but also that we are offering as companies. And we would encourage everybody to, you know, sign up for Trustbot as well, which can again be done through our website or by jo dropping us a line at hello at trustin.co.in or going to sahas.space, right, and signing up through Sahas. Um, we are really hopeful that this will give us also a lot of information around what else we could do better, right? It's not just about posh. It's not about compliance. It's also a lot more, like you said, around culture and compassion and sensitivity. And we can only learn when people tell us. So we're looking forward to what comes off the chatbot. Absolutely, Meghna. Thank you so much for sharing all of that and more power to you and your team for not only the work you do, but for the conscious thought that goes into every action behind uh, the products that we see up there. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, such a pleasure to be able to speak with you as always. Thank you.